This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Hey guys, I'm glad you're back for another chapter. Now in the previous chapter, what did we do? We looked at edits. Now they were simple, but those are the backbone of doing anything on this little timeline right down here. Edits allow us to insert clips, overwrite clips, or to, and this is kind of new to Final Cut Pro X, do what's called a connected clip. So let's do a quick review. I've got our elephant video down here. If you want to follow along with me, I'm in Zoo Project 2. And what I did is I put that down on the timeline and I selected a portion of this clip up here. You see what I'm doing? I'm beginning to make assumptions on your ability to work in Final Cut Pro X. If you don't know how I did this, you need to go back and figure that out. Sooner or later, you got to learn this stuff. All right, we got that done. I want to put that down there. I'm just going to use shortcuts. Watch my timeline down here when I press the letter D on my keyboard. Now, a D, just like we did last chapter, is an overwrite. It overwrites the information, which means the length of the timeline doesn't change. It overwrites material. I'm going to press Command Z. If life had an undo button, this would be a wonderful world. If I press the letter W, again, watch down here, we did an insert, which means the timeline is pushed forward based on the length of the clip. I'm going to press undo again. The last one, which is one of my favorites, I'm going to press the letter Q, and of course that is a connected clip. Now, all of these have one thing in common, and this is important to understand. In a normal edit, we are starting with the insertion, the overwrite, or the connect directly to the right of this bad boy right here. That's where it started, and it went this way. What I want to talk about in this lesson is called a back timed edit. Now, what that means is this part right here, up here, the last frame in this area I selected starts here and it pushes it to the left. Now, that may not make a lot of sense right now. But I guarantee you, as you get into more difficult editing situations, it is more important that your playhead determines where the clip ends as opposed to where it begins. Now, the three letters we did, D, W, and Q, to stand this on its head and go the other direction, all you got to do is remember the shift key. So with the same procedure, move your playhead where you want that other clip to end, not begin, now watch down here. I'll leave my uh, cursor. I'll leave it right there so you can watch that playhead. And I'm going to press Shift D. See what happened? Moved it to the left. So the last part up here, this right here, that last frame going on right up here, happens to be right here. It's not going this way. It's going that way. I'm going to press Undo. Let's go ahead and do the other two. I'll press Shift W which of course is an insert, not still pushing everything else to the right, but it started here and pushed it this way. And the last one, which I kind of like, it's one of my favorites, is hold on the shift and the Q, and notice it starts it on the left. This is called a back time edit. Now, I know I'm using a lot of my stuff here, my elephants and my birds. What you want to start doing, in my opinion, is start putting together your own clips and then begin using these techniques on your stuff and not just following along with what I do. I think that's where you're going to get the best advantage of this.